Hello viewers, my name is Calvin Cornell and I love Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I welcome you to this my channel and today we want to talk about uh, a topic which uh, is in deep in my heart about remaining focus on your goal. Remaining focus on your goal. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you because you created us in your own image. And we have a purpose why you created us. Give Lord, may you speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. As I say, we are going to talk about remaining focus in your goal. Remaining focus in your goal. And we want to say that when you say remaining focus, it just means that uh, there is a lot that surrounds you, but you need to make a decision. You may need to, um, to decide on what you are going to focus on. I want to say again that a goal is anything that you aim to achieve in life. Anything that you want to achieve in life, that is a goal. You, as an individual, you are sitting down, you want to do a business, maybe you want to expand your, uh, your, your business or maybe you want to continue with your education. I know young people who are, have done their diplomas and now you want to achieve your degree and your master's and your PhD. Or maybe you are focusing on something, a project that you want to achieve. Or maybe you want to save, and therefore there's something you want to do that uh, at the end of the day, you shall be successful. And I believe that everybody, every human being, have a goal and have an interest of succeeding in life. Now, when we talk about uh, remaining focus on your goal, we also need to understand that life is a journey. And in life being a journey, it has its ups and downs. And you know, when you are going through tough moments and good moments, it's not an easy thing. Life is a journey. And therefore, one thing that you need to understand that there's a time you will be up and there's time that you will be down. And one thing that brings this discussion is the crisis that we face in life. Life is full of crises. You know, when you are going through easy moment, uh, there's no challenge. But most of the challenges come when you are facing a crisis. And everyone faces a crisis at a certain day. Either you are going through a crisis at the moment, or it is coming, or you have gone through it before. I know a time comes whereby we are going through a crisis of uh, COVID-19 and uh, some have lost their jobs. But I want to tell you, as some are losing their jobs, some are gaining. Because even in a crisis, there's always some privileges. Maybe those who are doing well in their businesses at this time. I want to say that many times we found ourselves in the midst of a crisis. People experience more fear at that time. And hopelessness, anxiety is always there than before. And no one is strong when a crisis comes. And therefore during crisis is the time that either you can be so much confused or you can be so much stressed in your life. Because there is darkness. And therefore during darkness, during the crisis, are you still able to remain focused towards your goal? During this crisis we hear people fighting. During the crisis of COVID-19 I hear violence in marriages. You watch news and you are told that Teenagers' pregnancies in high number. 
the business has gone down. Tourist industry has gone down. We have no flights at the moment. In other words, many people have lost their jobs. That is the crisis that we are in. People are unable to continue with their normal education. You have a child who is sitting for class 8 or for form 4. You have many questions in your mind. And therefore, we are saying that's the time that people are so much hopeless. But I want to say that in the midst of all this, God has given us power of making a decision. No matter what we are going through in our life as individual, God is still giving us an opportunity to make a decision. I remember the story of Joshua. In the book of Joshua, he says, Remember where God has been with us. He was with us in the desert. And therefore, even the place that we are in, choose thee whom you shall serve. But for me and my house, I shall serve the Lord. A time comes whereby you must make your personal decision. Joshua realized that. I want also to say, crisis can build you or destroy you. When you are going through a crisis whereby you have lost a job, where your business is down, it can either build you or destroy you. And if I want to say that during crisis, that is the time to retreat. It's the time to retreat and make a decision. And therefore, one thing also I want you to note is that anytime you make a decision, your life change. And remember, even not making a decision to do something, you have made a decision to sit the way you have decided. But the, when you decide to make a decision to focus on a crisis, there's a result on that. You can also make a decision on um, focusing on your goal. Or you can make a decision of just sitting there and lamenting. So I want to say in life you have three Three decisions to be made. One, decide to lament where you are when you are in a crisis. Number two, decide to focus on the crisis. And number three, decide to focus on your goal. And I want to say, when you focus on the crisis, the following can happen, plus many others. One, you will remain with stress. Once I focus on the loss of job, once I focus on sickness, once I focus on my business going down, stress will be my portion. Number two, you will remain depressed. And number three, I can say you will remain stagnant. You cannot move because now you are focusing on the job that you have lost. You are focusing on the loved one that have gone to rest with the Lord. You are focusing on the disease instead of focusing on your healing. So it is your role and it's your duty and it's my duty to decide and make a decision in life. Will I focus on the crisis or will I focus on my goal? And when you focus on your goal, you remain optimistic. You remain self-disciplined. Because I know that, yes, I've lost my job, but I can still do one, two, three. So I know that when I go and sell something outside in the market, I will get something to pay some of my bills. Yes, I've lost job, but now I need to adjust and use what I have. So when I do so, I will be more op optimistic. I will be self-disciplined. The little that I have, I will use carefully. I want to say again that when you focus on your goal, you remain loving and caring. Remember the story of Abraham in Genesis. When they were going with Lot, 
and he decided to give Lot the opportunity to choose where he want to go. But because Abraham focused on God, that God who is taking him to a, the unknown land will direct him. He did not concern himself of the beautiful place, but Lot missed it. He looked for a place. He did not know that that place was close to Sodom, where the people of Sodom could lead them to temptation. Abraham decided to trust in the Lord, and the Lord led him safely. Remember the story of Joseph, when he was telling his brothers and his, uh, his family about the story of the dreams that he had seen. The brothers were looking down upon him, and they hated him more. But one thing that Joseph did, he remained focused to his dream. These people went and even threw him. In fact, the first thing, when they saw, uh, they saw him coming, they say, look at that dreamer. Today is coming. We are going to destroy him. And the Bible tells us they took his coat that his parent bought for him, which was very expensive. They throw him in a pit. Later, they sold him. When he was working in Potiphar's house, Potiphar's house put him in temptation. But the thing is, he ran away to escape committing adultery with Potiphar, Potiphar's wife. Because he was focusing on his goal. Yes, Potiphar's wife was very beautiful. Yes, if he slept with the Potiphar's wife, he could have been maybe promoted to the next level. But he was focusing on the goal. And that helps our brother Joseph. Later he was taken to the prison. He still focused on his gift of interpreting dreams. He was able to interpret. And through that his gift, that's why he was released from the prison. When his brother came to buy food, he recognized them. But he, he did not have any issue with them. He supported them. Later, when the father passed away, the brothers was afraid, and they thought that Joseph is going to kill them. But Joseph said, you had a bad plan towards me, but God had a greater plan for me, so that I can, be, I can bring salvation to many people. And therefore, brothers and sisters, to that story of Joseph and Abraham, we can agree that it's upon you as individual to focus on your dream. Once you focus on your dream, you remain optimistic, you remain self-disciplined. Again, I want to say you will have peace of mind. You will have peace of mind because, you know, I've lost a job, but tomorrow I need to go and sell my eye. I need to go and sell this. I need to go and do this job. And therefore, you will be focusing on what you will do tomorrow to get something to pay some of your bills. You will also have much to do. No, once you have peace, you have, a, you have a mind of creativity. Once your mind is so full of stress, you cannot be creative. You cannot innovate. And for, therefore, for young people, if you want to, be, to innovate, please try to focus on your dream. Try to avoid the stress. Finally, I can say, when you focus on your dream, you will be able to sacrifice a lot to help other people. You will be able to support even the needy. Yes, you have lost job, but you will care for those who are going angry. Yeah. And therefore I want to say that challenges and issues should not break you, but should make you strong. When Joseph faced hatred from his brothers, he remained strong. I want now, as I almost concluding, I want us now to talk on the enemies of focus, enemies of focus. What are some of the enemies of focus? Even where you are, can you think of uh, some of the enemies of focus? Number one, I want to say fear. And I want to say that fear is having faith in impossible. Fear is having faith in impossible. It is dwelling in negativity. And you believe that it is impossible. It is impossible. Having faith in impossible. You believe you cannot make it. 
and you look at things negatively, you, you look at things in, with a negative mind. 2 Timothy, 6, 2 Timothy chapter 1 from verse 6 to 7 says, This is why I remind you to fan into flame the spiritual gift God have given you when I lay my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And therefore I want to say that in the text, Timothy was going through challenges as a leader, and he was also young. And Paul was there to encourage him to be bold. Paul was there to encourage him to stand strong. Paul also advised him not to allow people to intimidate him. And therefore, even as you focus on the goal, you need to be strong, you need to be courageous, and you need not to allow people to intimidate you. Don't allow somebody to intimidate you because of your position in your place of work. Don't allow somebody to intimidate you because of your age. Remain focused. Uh, Paul mentioned three characters when he was trying to encourage Timothy. Number one, he talks about power. He talks about love and he talks about self-discipline. That God has given us uh, power, he has given us love, and he has given us self-discipline. For you to focus on the goal, you must remain, you must be connected by God. God is the source of your power. Be connected by God. Number two, be full of love. Because once you have love, you will have a lot of joy and you will achieve a lot in your life. Number three, be self-discipline. In the crisis, be self-discipline. Do not be afraid to fail. You know, many people fear to risk. And I want to say the best, the people who have achieved in the field of business, people who have achieved in education, people who have achieved in different ground, they are risk takers. Taking risk is key in life. You will fail, but never quit. I remember I failed many times in my primary school because many times I was not going to school because of lack of school fee. But I, I know also some of my classmates, they left me in primary because I repeated some of the class, but I did not give up. I have started some business, I've closed many a times, but I'm not giving up. So far, I was able to do my class 8, I was able to do my form 4, I was able to go to university because I did not give up. And therefore I want to say, failure in most cases is the right time to retreat and to think about your goal. And therefore when you fail in life, think of your goal. Number two, I want to talk about discouragement. We are surrounded by many things that discourage us. Our own experience. Maybe you have failed in your business before. Maybe you have failed in a relationship before. Maybe you have failed in other things. Or maybe you lack resources. Please. Joshua chapter 1, 7 to 8 says, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instruction Moses gave you. Do not de deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Never be discouraged. Remain strong. I know you have a 100% reason to be discouraged, but remain strong. Number three, I want to talk about procrastination. And allow me to say procrastination is the mother of all frustration. And when you read the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11, Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4 says, Farmers who wait for the perfect weather never plant. I will repeat. Farmers who wait for the perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. And therefore, don't procrastinate. Make a decision. Na uamwe either ni sasa ama sasa hivi na uendele na maisha yako. Number four, I want to say the things, the enemies of focus is other people's opinion. I want to say we have many people, we are surrounded, surrounded by many people from our family to our colleagues, to our place of worship, to our pastors, to our friends, to our bosses. Whom when you share your dream with, 
they are quick to discourage you. They are quick to give you a negative opinion. I know we have also few who will always stand with you, who will always encourage you. I've experienced some few bosses who will always hold your hand and encourage you. But I want to tell you, don't allow other people's opinion to kill you. Satan used close friends and family members to discourage you. John chapter 2, verse 24 to 25. But Jesus didn't trust them because he knew, he knew human nature. No one needed to tell him what mankind is really like. And Jesus was being guided by Isaiah 17, 9, which says, Human heart is the most difficult and very disparate and who can understand the mind of man? There's nothing important like renewal of mind. And I want each one of you, as we talk about focusing on your dream, you need to renew your mind. Renew your mind. When you read the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 23 to 27, talks about Paul going through a lot. He was taken to prison. He was frogmarched in the street. Many things happened to him, but Paul did not give up. He focused on the goal, and he said, I will run this race until the last moment. You need to remember that everyone is going through a crisis in life. It is you to make a decision to allow God to transform your mind for you to be focused in your goal. You will only reach your destiny if you remain to focus to your goal. If you have a destiny and you want to reach it, you need to remember that life is a journey and there is ups and downs. There's a lot of crises that we shall face. Some of them are sickness, losing job, diseases like COVID-19. But you still need to remain focused to your goal. At this moment, I want to pray for you that God will help you to remain focused. I know you are going through a lot. That's why we speak to you that if you are so much stressed, you can call us. You can call your pastor. You can call your friend. You can look for a professional counselor to help you so that you can remain focused on your dream. God created you, enemy for greatness. And the crisis want to destroy you. But the good message today is, even in the crisis, you can remain focused on your dream. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you because you know each one of us. You are the wonderful counselor. We pray that, Lord, may you teach us to remain focused on our dream. And Jehovah, Lord, may you help us to achieve it in this land of the living one. Thank you, Master, for speaking to us that in the midst of crisis, we can still focus on our dream. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you all for watching. I thank those who have subscribed to this channel. I love when you like it. And I love it when you share it to your friends. Let's meet again. Remember, you can remain focused even in the midst of crisis. Don't allow crisis to destroy you. In Jesus' name, amen. Till we meet again, God bless you.